different businesses have needs for different styles of people at different stages of the business life cycle. And as a business owner, you need to be aware that there's no fixed um, way or there's no one way to success. It's, it's kind of like there's no one perfect business structure or friendship structure. They, you know, it's, it's the structure that works for that particular group of people. And, and that will change over time as the business changes. The cultural evolution. <laughs> yeah. Is that, what, is that what you would refer to it? So culture is not fixed. It's forever changing. Cultural evolution. It's where living organisms and as living organisms, we're constantly changing and evolving based on the environment and the things that are thrown at us or the events that we experience. And so, yeah, that is that. It's constantly changing and that's why culture is not a tick and flick, a set and forget. It is something that you need to be conscious of and it's in every single conversation you have with anyone in your team. It's in every interaction. It's in every email you send. Your culture is either reinforced or you detract from your culture and you break it down. And can you talk about your experience with the importance of the CEO or the leader in the culture because a business isn't just the leader it's the whole business but the leader plays a very I would assume plays a big role with culture I think the leader plays a really significant role because ultimately they set what is okay and what is not okay and it's every single person is critical in a culture and particularly your senior leadership team is critical in that culture but a hundred percent it has to be bought into by the CEO or the owner or founder of the business and their behaviours are the biggest detractors or the biggest reinforcers of a culture. And the moment one person does something contrary to it, then everybody can act differently to it and say, well, it's okay because X did it. I mean, you were talking previously about um, understanding each team member to ensure alignment, but actually your first goal and priority should be to understand yourself Yes. And the impacts you have on the team and the things you say and the things that, you, you know, the way you act and, and the values that you embody. Yes, 100%. And so when we do a personal alignment workshop, we like to have the leaders present because they're doing the same evaluation that the team are part of. And I guess what we're doing through that process and what you've just spoken about is having that independent third party come in is it's creating an awareness. And we all know that if we're not aware of something, we can't change it. So if you've got an issue with me and you're not telling me, I can't do anything to address that because I'm not aware of it. Businesses who avoid conflict and can't create the cultural, I guess, standards or behaviours or values that support the right kinds of conflict aren't going to grow and continue. They're going to have, as we said before, those side conversations and that, oh, did you hear this or did you hear that or what happened in that the meeting? Gossip. The gossip kind yeah. of side meetings, which actually one takes time away from the productive value-add activities, but it also creates that culture of underlying conversations as opposed to we brought it to the table, we all got our opinions out, we all said what we thought we should do and we actually all agreed together and we all bought into that and now we're all heading in the same direction. 